Welcome to the Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be here tonight with you guys. It's an amazing crowd. Yeah. Amazing crowd tonight. And even better. Even better. Believe it or not, even better than the crowd last night. I hosted the, uh, the Kennedy Center Honors mm -hmm. last night. Mm -hmm. It's going to broadcast, uh, one, uh, December 28th. Right? Mm -hmm. Something like that? Check your local listings. <laughs> but only CBS. It's going to be on CBS. And it's, it's a huge honor to be there. Right. You know, because right. you're there with all these artists where they got the... They got the rainbow ribbons around their neck, right. the Kennedy Center thing, and the president and the first lady is there. And you're backstage with all these amazing oh, like, legends, because it's legends honoring legends. And last night, I got to meet Ringo Starr. Oh. All right? Yeah. That's exactly, that's exactly what I said <laughs> when I saw him. And do you know what Ringo Starr says to everybody he sees, whether it's like an individual or like a crowd? He says this. <laughs> Two deuces. Two deuces. He does Two this. Deuce. He does this to everybody. And you're like, okay, yeah, sure, peace and love. So I, 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 I'm right next to him, and I'm like, I got to introduce myself to Ringo Starr. So I turned to him and I said, hey, uh, Ringo, I just, what, what an honor. I just, um, I'm, I'm hosting tonight. And he goes, oh, look here. It's, it, what do we have here? It's Stephen Colbert. <laughs> he knew my name. He knew my name. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. A beetle. A beetle. Knew my name. Knew my name. And he goes, What's it been, like 20 years? Uh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and I said, Yeah, yeah, it's been about 20 years. And we have never met. <laughs> but in my moment of glory, I didn't want to contradict Ringo Starr. Yeah, 20 years. And yeah. then we were on stage together later at the end of the, at the, end of the show. At the, uh, what, it was the Eagles. They were honoring the Eagles, mm -hmm. one of the companies. So but the show ends. Can I say this show ends? We can say this, right? It ends with life in the fast lane. They, they, they tear down the house. All right. the guys are on stage. Same. Steve Vai's out there. Oh, kill. Uh, kill. Uh, Bob Seeger is there. Yeah. Bob Seeger. I believe we're all ready for the resegerance. I mean, it is. I'm a huge Seeger fan. So Seeger's out there just ripping his way through life right. in the fast yeah. lane. You know, just just screaming no, his way through it, mm. and. Ringo doesn't have a tambourine. He does, I don't think he has a mic. He's dancing on the stage doing this. And but you couldn't. But everybody's so happy to be on stage with Ringo right, that right. I'm just going back to him. Hey, what's going? <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Anyway, the point of my story is that after last night, I think I'm the fifth Beatle. I might be. Is that possible? What's he say? What's he say? He's not saying. Let's see, what else? Other than me meeting Ringo, what's the big story today? Uh, oh, the big story this weekend was that Donald Trump created an international oops a daisy <laughs> by getting on the phone with uh, Taiwan President Tsai Ing wen. Now, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Hey, Sai, it's, it's Donald. Hi, Donald, how are you doing? Hey, what are you wearing? That's inappropriate. <laughs> now, here's the thing. The U.S. does not recognize Taiwan as being an independent nation because China views Taiwan as a renegade province. Basically, it's like if Cheers refused to acknowledge that Frasier had become its own show. <laughs> and for a variety, for a variety yeah. of Frasier fans, that's not you, right? Okay. And for a variety of military and economic reasons, the United States has gone along with this since 1979. Now, since they both speak Chinese, maybe Trump wasn't sure which nation was knit, which, you know, here. So here's an easy way for Donald Trump to remember which China we talk to. Sir, it's the one where they make your ties. <laughs> Now, so, so it's kind of a big deal. In fact, the exchange touched the most sensitive spot for China's foreign policy. Well, no surprise, Donald Trump has a long history of sensitive spot touching. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you playing? 
And when this all blew up this weekend, Trump explained it away, tweeting, the president of Taiwan called me today to wish me congratulations on winning the presidency. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, she called him. But how are all these rogue world leaders getting his private number? Has he posted flyers all over the world promising to teach you guitar? <laughs> he's... He's apparently... It seems I don't know what's going on, but he apparently will take any congratulatory call. It doesn't matter who it's from. Uh, Mr. Trump, we have a couple of well-wishers on the phone. It's, uh, it's Robert Mugabe, Joran van der Sloot, and the guy who shot Harambe. <laughs> Put him through. Put him through. Put him through. Good guy. Whoa, whoa, now, whoa. really? Harambe? That's where you draw the line? <laughs> really? Harambe? <laughs> now, China is giving Trump the benefit of the doubt with the Chinese foreign minister calling it a shenanigan by the Taiwan side. Now, I don't know about you, I have never heard of a single shenanigan. <laughs> it's usually more than one shenanigan. Yeah, they travel yeah, in pairs. Yeah, right, exactly. It's shenanigans. Yeah, They're like breeding yeah. pairs. That's how you get more than one shenanigan. <laughs> but if it's just one shenanigan, I hope it doesn't escalate into a hijink. <laughs> now, some or <laughs> crossbreed. <laughs> Now, some reporters say this wasn't a random phone call that Trump took, upsetting our nuclear rival. Some say it was planned for months in advance. So if you were worried that Trump might accidentally start World War III, cheer up. He might be doing it on purpose. <laughs> Meanwhile, back here in the homeland, mm. all right, Trump continues to make cabinet appointments by accepting Facebook friend requests. Today, <laughs> it's a system. A system, the point is, a system is in place. There's a process. Today, Trump named former neurosurgeon and current coma patient Ben Carson. <laughs> appointed, he appointed Ben Carson to be Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. This is surprising. Because just a few weeks ago, Carson made it clear he wasn't qualified to run a federal agency. But today, Carson's spokesman explained that he is perfect for housing and urban development because, quote, he did spend part of his childhood in public housing. <laughs> yes. So get ready for our next Surgeon General, someone who has been to the doctor. And last week, at the first of his victory rallies, Trump teased the crowd with another major cabinet appointment. I don't want to tell you this because I want to save the suspense for next week. Don't let it outside of this room. Do you promise? Raise your hand. Promise. Oh, I promise. <laughs> Cross my heart and hope to die. <laughs> now, now, Trump did eventually get around to making the announcement, and it was worth the wait. We are going to appoint Mad Dog Mattis as our Secretary of Defense. Okay. A Secretary of Defense with the name Mad Dog. Does not automatically make me feel safer. Mm. You got a president with no experience in foreign policy with his finger on the button, and the other person in the room is a guy named Mad Dog. <laughs> that's not a Secretary of Defense, that's the sidekick on a morning zoo crew. <laughs> I don't want a Secretary of Defense, Mad Dog Mattis, or a Secretary of State, Hair Trigger Harrison. <laughs> I want CI Director Cool Cat Covington and Joint Chief of Staff General willing to project American power but surprisingly rational about it, Robinson. <laughs> and Mad Dog... I hear you on that. I hear you on Mad that. Dog certainly earned his nickname. Listen to some of his advice. Be polite, 
Be professional, but have a plan to kill everybody you meet. <laughs> this quote and more can be found in Mattis's self-help book, How to Win Friends and Murder Them. <laughs> We've got a great show for you tonight. Jason Bateman is here. We want to return.